It was a dramatic day of testimony in the federal corruption case against Corrine Brown, the former congresswoman taking the stand in her own defense this afternoon as the case begins to wind down. This comes one day after her longtime friend and former chief of staff testified against her. We have live team coverage on your side's Clark Four Acres outside the federal courthouse. But let's begin with First Coast News anchor Heather Crawford. Heather? Good evening, Jeannie. Well, court just ended for the day a few minutes ago. Corrine Brown's in the middle of being cross-examined, and she will take the stand again tomorrow morning when court resumes. Now, she testified today that she wished she paid closer details, closer attention to her finances, and said that she was always busy doing things for her constituents. Now, her testimony definitely drew the biggest crowd so far during her trial. Uh, the courtroom was at capacity. The overflow room, which is where I sat, was near capacity. Uh, at times, Brown was indignant. At times, she was tearful. And she testified today that she did not know that her long-serving chief of staff, Ronnie Simmons, had stolen any money until he pleaded guilty this past February. Now, Brown is facing 22 charges in a 24 count federal indictment, uh, charges pertaining to alleged mail, wire and tax fraud. Those are charges that Brown adamantly denies. And the defense is trying to pin all of this on Ronnie Simmons. And we heard Brown talk a lot about Simmons today, testifying that she loved him, that he was like a son to her. And she talked about how he had access to her bank accounts. I want to pull up one of her uh, quotes today on the stand. She said sometimes he would move money from one account to another downstairs. I know it sounds strange, but that's what he did. Now, First Coast News Clark Foyker has been covering this case from the very beginning. And Clark, I found it really interesting how Brown testified today that she'd only met the head of One Door for Education, that bogus charity who's pleaded guilty in this case. She only met Carla Wiley a handful of times. Yeah, Carla Wiley is sort of a non-issue for Kareem Brown at this point. She's trying to convince the jury that Ronnie Simmons basically moved all this money on his own. And of course, they've seen documents and photos showing Brown with either cash in her hand or her signatures on checks involving One Door for Education. Uh, court just wrapped up here a couple moments ago, and the Congresswoman today, her testimony was very interesting. Her attorney, James Smith, uh, uh, put her up on the stand, and the first questions out of, her, out of his mouth were asking her if she was involved in a conspiracy to commit wire fraud, or in fact, committed wire fraud herself. She said no to both of those questions. And then her attorney attempted to unravel all of the things they've tried to pin on her and show the congresswoman as sort of ambivalent, uh, that she worked towards scholarships and in the other areas where money was changing hands and, and could have been illegal, that she simply did not know what was going on and that Ronnie Simmons handled the duties of her office and the finances within in a very intimate way. I think one of the most interesting things about her testimony today is that she really addressed the jury in a very uh, dignified and intentional way. Certainly with some questions and answers, it was a yes, no kind of thing. But as the Congresswoman always does, she's a long winded person, has been for decades. And certainly it was no different in court today. She spoke to those jurors, was often pivoting in her chair as she was talking to them. She, you know, she's really trying to convince him them that she was doing the right thing the whole time and that Ronnie Simmons is really the one who is responsible for all this. Of course, attorney said, why on earth would Ronnie Simmons do this if you and he were so close? And she could not answer that question, said she had no idea that he didn't need to steal the money. She is under cross-examination right now, and that will continue tomorrow morning. Heather? All right, Clark, and the court resumes at 9 a.m. Uh, the judge said that he will likely send the jury home Friday afternoon and that deliberations could begin Monday morning. We have extensive coverage of this trial, of this case, and of previous interviews with the former congresswoman right now on firstcoastnews.com. That is the latest from downtown Jacksonville. Let's send it back in to Lauren, who's tracking uh, another storm warning. Lauren?
You good? Okay, you can just look at me. Okay, okay. Marissa Alexander. Um, tell me why you're you're here. It's your first day coming to court today, right? Right. Today's my first day, and I'm here just to support the congresswoman. I think that she um, obviously she supported me when I was going through my situation. So I'm just here to support her and show um, her that the solidarity. Unless you know, you've been through trial, you wouldn't know what it's like. And I think you need all the support you can get. So tell me about that. Um, when you're up there, mm -hmm. um, coming back to court after, mm -hmm. is this your first time back to court since you were actually? No, actually yeah. I've gone into um, Judge Bass's court and done some hearings just to listen into uh -huh. some juvenile and domestic violence hearings. So it's not, you know, I've been back to court. So what, take us through that. What mm -hmm. What is that like when you're up there? Today she's on the stand testifying for several hours. What? Tell me how you relate and what, what she's going through. I mean, you know, it's it's all about you. You have to be careful about what you say and what you don't say. And and I think the, the fact of the matter is if she's telling the truth, she'd be fine. And I think that it's just a, it's a, it's a lot of pressure to be in that seat where all eyes are focused on you. And then you, you know, what you can, what you say is going to be cross-examined. It's a lot of pressure. And you took the stand in your defense. Mm -hmm. um, as far as Ronnie Simmons goes, mm -hmm. uh, yesterday we heard him testify for about five hours. Mm -hmm. um, Talk about, I mean, did you have your close loved ones testifying against you? I mean, talk about that. Yeah, I mean, that's difficult, you know what I mean? Because it's people that you care about that, um, you know, are actually, obviously, in your, you know, going against you. Um, and, and, and for whatever reason, they have to, obviously. And, and it's difficult for you to sit there and not be able to say anything when you and that person absolutely know the truth. And it's, it's hurtful. How would you describe the testimony from Kareem Brown that you've listened to today? I actually have not. This would be my first time going back in on it. But the other testimony that I have seen, it was other witnesses prior to hers. And, and do you think this is a confusing case? I mean, are, are you confident that she'll be acquitted? Um, she's facing up to 357 years in, in prison. Um, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's confusing, but from what little bit I have seen, and I haven't been here for the last two weeks, I think just from what I saw, it's enough reasonable doubt. I mean, you, have, you do two weeks worth of muddy in the water, I think it's enough to breathe and out, in my opinion, so. And have you talked to Corrine since she was indicted? No. Not no. since, mm -hmm. since indicted. So other than passing her in the hallway, just let her know I was here, I haven't spoken to her. Uh -huh. And what do you want her to know? I'm here. I mean, uh, up, down, or bad, I'm here regardless, and I, I'm in her corner, and I support her. And you think she's innocent? Um, you know, I can't say, but I, in my eyes, she's done good enough for me to feel like she can't do any wrong in my eyes, so. Anything else you want to say? Tell me what you're doing now. i am just got a project going, my nonprofit, and so I just want to contribute to what everybody's done to support me. I want to just give it back, and that's it. And your nonprofit's called what? Marissa Alexander Justice Project. And it helps who? It helps um, the community entirely, but specifically, you know, uh, intimate partner violence, domestic violence, criminal policy reform, all things that led up mass incarceration, all those things that affect my case, that's my nonprofit.